gentlemen, G2 and Mouse Sports. It's going to be our second best of three of the day. And G2, absolute specialists on this map. This will be their pick. I'm interested to see what kind of tactical developments they've made on that T side. That should be where they'll be starting. We'll check in with them now. And indeed, they will be. We're going to have a smoke too. Flashes available for Nexa, more talks for Amanek, and they're making their way towards middle. You'll see a lot of action here on this side of the map. No toolbox anymore. Look out for the boost and construction area. Ooh, unarmored CZ up close. Carrigan, always a brave soldier. And no exception to start off Vertigo. Doesn't look like he's going to want to check the angle itself. Aggressive from the CT, though, and it's going to be punished. Hunter just unloads 20 bullets into the body and the rib cage of Voxic. Now seeing Carrigan rotated in, he's in the perfect spot, and the flash from Nexa was Brilliant. Carrigan goes from full flashed to forced to watch as this round does look like it's going G2's way. Oh, God, is it ever. Five on one. Robs will have absolutely nothing to say about this one, but it will he be able to find a few kills? That's the only question left to be answered. He'll be there towards elevators. Takes a lot of damage from Amanek, and that's going to be the clean sweep from G2. Amanek with a nice fancy jump there at the end as well. Show Pretty off. standard. <laughs> yeah, that's... I've seen you a few times, Alex. I think Shut I saw you yesterday <laughs> having a little go on the jump on Vertigo. <laughs> oh, it's always fun. I did get... I did get the coolest clip. Maybe we can put it on the broadcast. The one where I clutched and then had 17 HP and the bomb was going to explode and oh, I jumped, jumped on? off nice. and avoided the blast and sp saved my weapon. That's big. Well, the demo i'll make the clip i have a shadow play is that okay, okay? That, that works too cool that works good as well so four spy from mouse sports here on the back foot already they're gonna have desert evils in the five sevens and chris j with a bit of positional control towards the b steps he'll be assisted by robs here in the same position voxy patrolling middle we love the desert eagle and it's such a difficult position to hold here chris j gets himself towards a generator and looks for a kill. This does look different already, though, to the other Vertigos. You know, we were watching, who was it, Furia, who just played it like it was 2019? Well, changed map, and already it seems that the default spread. Ooh, Kenny taking a chance there, just into the shins of Rops. And Chris, he's only got himself, what Whoa. was eight, now five HP. He'll be finished off by Nexa, pocketing a cool 600 bucks. Now with five men versus three, it does just look like a regroup and finish on the site, maybe leaving an Amanek loose thread to comb through middle. The Mouse Sports Force Spy. Actually, the Mouse Sports Camp in general. Yeah. Uh, in recent times have been suffering, that's for sure. We haven't been seeing the, uh, what is it, top three team in the world that everybody's known to grow and love in recent times. You can see they're frustrated themselves as well. The tweets are quite indicative as to where they're at mentally. You can see that they're obviously being quite jovial about the losses, but at the same time, you can see they're screaming, let me out at times as well. Yeah, and look, I, I believe, uh, I need to just double check with some official confirmation, but I'm pretty sure if Mouse Sports lose this game here today, they will be out of contention or contention will become very, very difficult to make it into the playoffs there of that European side of things. Sounds about right. They haven't had the best showing so far on the road to Rio. G2 will get the bomb down, the round guaranteed, and it's up to Mouse Sports now to save their upgraded pistols if possible. First up will be Amanek. He's an absolute master with the MAC-10, looking to farm some cash here. Get $600 per kill with the weapon, and it wouldn't be the end of the world if he went down as well, because they've already actually already got four SMGs. So, sure, that's fine. Certainly can win a round off that. The next round will be perfect for it, but when the guns come out, that's when you probably want to get a few more rifles. And here comes Amanek now, knowing that they're actually ready and waiting on the other side. It's mowing oh, them beautiful. down. There it is. That's lots of money in the bag. Everyone survives once again. One HP for Amanek, and they'll take all those SMGs into this perfect situation there. Full eco. A real chance to farm a, a lot of money. What a dream. Oh, my God. They're about to go farming. Yep. Everyone's got their pitchforks. Their hoes, what other kind of uh, farming instruments uh, combine are Combine harvester, you combine want to get a harvester, drill? yeah. Yeah, you want to get up there. Um, that's else? true, yeah. This, that kind of farming, that's probably the kind of farming G2 are about to do in round three. Yeah. With four yeah, SMGs. Oof. Not much they can do to avoid their fate here, but a stack middle is a good place to start. Could be a quick kill onto Jax, get the SMG rolling, a flank, it all spirals, but there is another friend joining him in middle Amanek there as well. So before we get stuck into the gun rounds, guys, we've got some more stats coming through from our stats man, SEO. I need to get his stats thingy up because he always drops some knowledge bombs. Yeah, well, right now he's let everybody, well, he's let us know, to let everybody at home know that Mouse have the second lowest opening kill percentage, which is at 40.3% on Vertigo against top 30 oppositions in 2020. G2 have the best, which yeah. is at 68.4%. They are so good on this map, it's unreal. 
I love the fact they've got Dusty closing out as well. For me, this looks like a G2 2-0. The train is the only question mark. Like, Mouse Wards could come online in that map. And uh, we'll see. I hope they do. Like, Dust 2 between these two is always epic, to be honest with you. And uh, bomb planted. Round comes to his logical conclusion. As we said, it's an eco here. Rob's with the saved CZ and Armour. Um, does find a kill. What's uh, going on here? He has no kit, but uh, uh, he's going to wait. Uh, They're not is. looking at it. No one's no, near it. Oh, Kenny's coming huge. back. Kenny's coming back. Okay. If Foxy does it now, it's fine. But wait. Just wait. He'd have to start it Ugh. now. Kenny's too smart. Yeah, he's way too smart. He's even checking. He'd have to start oh. it now. No, no oh. time. No time. Well, he's heard it. He's fake. Okay, so try for the kill instead. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, if he had a kit and a smoke, that's yeah. like the cheekiest of all the ninjas. Oh. He's regretting his purchase there. I was getting very worried <laughs> at that point, but it will be a G2 with a 3 0, and they've got a bit of a bonus situation going on here. Now, if you're not aware, we don't really have bonus rounds per se in the traditional way like we did a few years ago. They're more. You have SMGs to operate with on the T side. You might as well go for it. You're probably not going to win the round, but cause as much damage as you can. If you do win this one, there's a great chance you can just run away with this first half. Frozen, Carrigan have no helmets, so the SMGs are a lot more potent in that direction. And this is going to hammer it home towards A. Try and be fast, get up towards short, and use those SMGs at very short distance. And Frozen's trying to contest, but the bullets are just oh. too strong. It's a pre-fire straight through the smoke. Frozen gone, an M4 upgrade available, and it does look like Hunter's happy to snatch that one up for the MAC-10 in exchange. Woxic, he's standing his ground for now. No one-way smoke they can throw on towards the ledge of that crane. Instead, he just wants the info. He wants to fight, but Kenny takes it. And now already a two-man disadvantage for Mouse Sports to overcome. Big stuff here from G2. Bear in mind, they started the SMGs and now they've upgraded one of those to a rifle, got themselves a couple of kills and still have utility available. Carrigan knows he needs to do something here, but he's got no grenades, no kits. What does he even do in this situation? Hunter will take him down and it's now back to a five versus two situation. Robs and Chris, presumably one of them towards B at this stage, trying to work out what their next move can be. Chris J only with that Desert Eagle, waiting for a good opportunity to plant this bomb. They still have two smokes here. They're being so methodical. Making sure that they're not going to lose anyone here. Keep all five players up. It's beautiful to watch. It really is. Satisfying. Mouse should save here, but I want to remind everybody, and well, even us here, that uh, if we remember that North game where Mouse Sports and Co. went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, round number 13, Henry, does that one stick out in your memory at all? It does. It was a two-on-four we situation. We, we it was Kirby and Cajun. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Oh, yes. And that's because the way that North were approaching this, they were getting a lot of spam kills, even though we've had the new adjustment to metal now no longer wood. They were still finding frags through those boards. And they were also able to execute onto that A bomb site relatively easily. And then they even changed it up a gear. They went from just execute onto the site to smoking off elevator room and then taking control of the sniper deck. So North were able to actually manhandle mouse spots on this A defense. They were stuck between do we fight, which they'd lose, and retakes, which they'd lose. And right now we just saw them in limbo, which you're definitely going to well, lose. Bear in mind, it wasn't really a gun run. We had Chris J with a Desert Eagle. We had Vox on the go. M4, right? So it's, it's difficult to really quantify that as a, a big, important round, which it was, but at the same time, mouse spots didn't have everything they need. When Vox gets the orb, they can be more aggressive towards the A ramp. Carol are going to be more active as well the utility required and hopefully Christian will have a rifle at some yeah. point in this game because this Desert Eagle thing he's bringing out like it's kind of cool but at the same time I hate it I don't know what else to say <laughs> <laughs> it's kind yeah. of cool but I hate it sure it's like studded belts yeah. you know uh, kind of cool but yeah. I they're, hate it they've got their place I'm sure maybe behind closed doors but uh, I don't know we'll see whether he can start stepping up he's got 4100 right now and it's going to be 4-0 G2 hasn't hit a Deagle bullet yet with 4 ADR yeah good point Round five will have to be where it starts. Just Ooh. the rifle on Rob's a deep smoke. I like that. And a nade in dying. It does give him the info. Fakes the step, trying to keep them on their toes. Rush, can you check it down? I'm in next position a second. Oh, he was on some cool boost at the back here. Look over the generator. It was a uh, pretty nice look. I think it was on that back. Ah, right? interesting. Yeah, it was a pretty cool angle. But they're being very patient, aren't they? I love to see this, the discipline. Even though you're 4-0 you're up, everyone else will be running around at this point, enjoying themselves. When Chad the says to us, nobody die, this yeah. is what he wants us to be doing. Yeah, this is it. Just yeah. Sit it, for the brakes on. Instead of creeping into the side yeah. and getting your head taken off, this is just getting stock of what the opposition is doing. And now, well, with 45 seconds left on the clock, they have to get a bit of a wriggle on. Lots of utility used over towards that B bomb site might force them over towards A here. Oh, that smoke's lovely. Amanek just... 
blooms it immediately on top of the floor of flame, yeah, and now middle is theirs. He throws it from the same position as well by the generator. It's a really nice little sequence he's got there. And so we've got Jax trying to make their way through towards the B bomb site using construction if possible, but Robs could shut it all down. He'd have to find multiple kills at this point, but the timing is just beautiful. Frozen shots, not bad oh, either. Wow. A couple of Deagle headshots here, but not enough to win the round, of course. Good damage, but nothing's really right home about. The money is out of control for G2 here. We've got $14,000 for Hunter as we enter round number six. Maximum loss bonus now for Mouse Sports, and the Voxic Orb is out and about. Is the replay. And Mr. Hunter just taking them down. Bit of a partial bite, and Amadek. Lovely shots in there. Remember that opening kill statistic that we were talking about yes. right there? Well, it's getting worse and worse as every round progresses for Mouse Sports. Currently at 0% here in this map with five rounds deep. And that Zero would mean that G2 at 100%. Wow. Simple maths, ladies and gentlemen. It all works out. And they've only had one multi kill round so far, Mouse Sports. That was Frozen's double just kill. Just then, right? Yeah. I found it interesting as well. You know, I like to take note of the completely pointless information, but Hunter had the option to take the AK. He opted for the M4. He wants to keep the T-side M4. He's already got kills with it. Claims Dra oh. been doing that recently as well. Yeah. When you know the money's low and they're not getting the helmets, the M4 can actually put out more DPS if you get... Like the rate of fire, on. yeah. Yeah, so like, I don't know if there's a massive amount of signs behind that, but sometimes in the T-side it just feels good, you know, you feel quite nimble. And also, you, you, you know you're kind of rubbing the salt in the wound as you kill them with their own weaponry. Supposed to be a disadvantage, oh. not for Kenny S though with this AWP. He's gonna get another Hello. one. Frozen just steps up, puts his head in the guillotine. And now Rops, he's got a one versus five handed to him by Kenny S. Well, round over, job done. Rops will be the B anchor and just can't find any luck so far. One and four, just gonna have to try and stay alive here. Absolutely nothing to do. Kenny S just absolutely destroys him there with a the sniper. Getting better and better. Aging like a fine wine here in 2020. Kenny S continues to impress. Boys, we've somehow missed this fact, and well, maybe we haven't missed it. It's just the game is going at such a pace. There's only three kills yeah. recorded so far for Mouse Sports, six rounds deep in the so game. Rops with what? One, One with and a CZ. Frozen with two. Yeah, so that CZ came from the third round of the game, and the Deagle round we came saw those two kills. just before. So they only have three kills, six rounds in. They are getting absolutely this is a destroyed thrashing. right now. A thrashing. By the way, off-topic conversation, because I assume this is going to be a bit of a timeout situation yeah. for Mouse. Um, the, you, see, you know this spot at the back of ramp where we saw everyone saving? Yes. Um, it's, yes. Like, it's a very common spot now to save because you're safe from the bomb blast. How long do you think it is until we get a Dosia-style nade? Someone just throws the HE just to the corner of Scaf from like elevators or something. You should get the distance, right? Yeah, here, you should this definitely is what I'm talking be able about. to you line get that it. up. Yeah. That would be such a sick dunk, it's and you're safe. Definitely something to be considering, right? right? Because you can see the HP is normally around like half yeah, after so that bomb goes you take, off. You put so 50 on the nose? Can you throw it from the elevators? That's what I'm thinking, through the square, now, imagine. I was, I was working out one that you could use when the CTs are all in elevator room for the Ts to throw from the crane position. Mm. So you It looks too high. It's way too far, yeah. maybe. What well, could you throw it from that's safe then? Maybe the boost one just, the just on the side of elevator. Yeah, you that. could probably lob it. Yeah, we'd have to look into it. The there. X God it style. But you could just enter late if you were happy to lose the, your own the life. The problem right? was in that corner. You only take what, like twenty damage or something. Isn't that? No, they went for, they went down to sixty. And okay. I was keeping. That's where the idea stemmed from. Yeah. Okay, well, we need Mouse to actually start finding some kills. It's not even about finding rounds. It's actually just finding frags. Because that would help. Because the individuals aren't getting any opportunities here. You can just see how thorough G2 are. And this is very suffocating, right? Because players who are normally known for getting multi-kills, Rops, Woxic, Frozen, those guys right now are being kept to nothing. This is almost a clean sheet at this point of the game. Six rounds in, only three kills. I can't remember the last time I ever saw that. Look at the Ang from Frozen. Oh, Everybody sick. write that one down in your journal. Yeah, looking at all the boosts, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, you really are going to wallop anybody, and especially because you got that awkward extra kind of so inaccurate He's jump. watching for the boost, and Voxic is focused on the actual crossover from middle here. This could actually be quite interesting. Voxic's only got a P250, though. He'd have to hit the swiftest double dink. Go on. Let's see what you got. Well, that's perfect. A dink and one to the chest. Jax is gone. Rifle scooped up for Woxic. That Molotov might deter him. It's from Amanek. He's got a lovely set of utility. He throws a smoke on top of that with the same lineup. And just like that, vision is denied. A lovely little gap, perhaps, had they crossed through middle. But it's not going to work out this time. They're not out of the clear here yet. With 37 seconds left on the clock, the rotation might cut, start coming through now from Mouse Sports. They should be able to get onto the bomb site and hopefully get it down, but that's when the chaos normally ensues. They're staying very quiet. Molotov out to sandbags. Now the nades come through. This is the full commitment. Oh, if Woxic was to hit another, but for now, 
All in the clear. Bomb will be planted. He can see so many. There was a header shot available on next to the bomb carrier, but he will be allowed to plant. Carrigan chipping away the health, but it may not be enough. Yeah, that was his chance for his opening kill as well. And will be Carrigan going down and presumably the round as well. They've got no kids, but a Molotov found frozen with the M4. Might just be better off saving the weapon, but Chris Jake does find a kill back in return. That's towards Nexa. Still so much work to be done before we can start talking about a defuse attempt here, but the Molotov towards short. Maybe we can get a few more kills out of this one. Amanek will take care of the last couple yeah. of players, and surely this one's over. Yeah, no we'll kill. No real time for this one, and Kenny, he loves these angles. On that upper platform, peeking into the A site, it's his jam. Yeah, and speaking of Kenny, through the four maps on Vertigo in 2020 against top 30 teams, he's currently sitting with a plus 53 KD ratio. That's kill-death ratio for those people playing at home. Ooh, and he's 19 one. for three in terms of opening jewels. 19 for three in what? Sorry, what was four that? Opening maps. jewels. Four maps. Yeah. Over, over the four maps Woof. in 2020 against top 30 teams. So Kenny, Kenny S, a revolution. Well, we talk about individuals like Zywu struggling with the AWP on a map like this. Kenny has absolutely no problems whatsoever. Well, there's the AWP of Woxic striking very early. Jax will go down again. So he's won that duel twice now, Woxic, in that middle area, and it will be his second frag. So finally some kills getting on the board here for Mousebox, but we're already seven rounds deep. Yeah, oh. and still yet to post a round. The opening duel has finally been found here, and we will have a five-on-four scenario. Amanek, though, mid control. Chris J snatches it away towards B, and he's presumably got a second kill as well, but Hunter, the preemptive shot there on the drop down, and Carrigan will keep the man advantage. It's up to Kenny Esto. He'll be joined by Hunter, and they've won plenty of these sort of rounds together. Now it's just down to the sniper himself. He'll be looking towards elevators and edging his way towards construction. But Rob's got a prime position. Should be able to take him down, which he will. They're going to be using that spot a lot by the looks of things. Yeah, it's a good one. It's hard to see that head there and maybe something that a lot of teams wouldn't be aware of. We weren't so. aware of no, it we until were. coming in today. So it's uh, always a day in the office. You learn a lot with Counter-Strike. <laughs> it, it is so satisfying, isn't it, in that sense? Like we say, every time you see this map being played, we, we learn a new position, a new smoke, new flashes. There's something that can be done that we weren't aware of. Like Amanek's nade set just looks so optimized for a mid-take. You've even got now over towards that A ramp, the smoke, the jump smoke that we see teams throwing. They're now throwing the... Uh, oh, nice quick flashes. Look at that. He double flashes the A ramp from T4. So we knew you could do that smoke, but we haven't seen people flash that either. So that's another cool thing. So you can potentially like dissuade Completely. them from pe peeking with the AWP towards the corner. Without throwing it up the ramp on sandbags, yeah. which is a very easily so, yeah. anti-flashed flash. So they won't be able to avoid those. So we should try that out as well. That's awesome. They should just execute A here against double AWPs, right? You can see Frozen already setting up retake nades. If you took at the top left of your radar right there, mouse spots do not want to contest this A ramp position whatsoever. So that's why they're holding on to all their grenades. Look at this on the left. You can see Oof. Molotov, yeah. Smokes, HEs galore. That means that G2 will need to move on in and bait this out. If they don't, they're going to be taken right on down by some of that utility damage we get so excited about. Ooh, Chris has got a lineup oh. for sure. It's perfect. Like that. So that's just deny their Molotov and taking territory, right? So they've both thrown out Molotovs at the same time. Chris is to deny the progression of Hunter there. It's like nobody threw anything. Exactly. Oh my god, welcome to lineups with G2 and Mouse Sports. We've got another perfect this banger one, here. Yeah. The isosceles triangle being deployed. And uh, <laughs> that's going to be. Oh, oh, I thought it was too. Of course not. Like that. What's um, it make? They're walking back to B. There's all the utilities starting to be burned under the flash, a Molotov, and oh, Rops with the AWP. He's going to get tested, immediately falls off. They've got two AWPs to hold B, if I'm not mistaken. It's Rops and Woxic. They're bounding in, and already the shots are starting to hit. My God, the artillery. They all connect, and it leaves all Kenny and Nexa with only eight seconds. The bomb is loose. The round is lost, and he's just going to try and get the hell out of dodge. Well, that's, uh, that's something that they can adjust on immediately here. If you... Oh, Nexa, after the time, it's not going to be that much of a problem. We know that the money is built up beautifully on that side of things with a 7-2 scoreline now. But Mouse Spots, they're finally starting to wake up. Now, if we want to actually talk about that tactical approach right there from Mouse, that's fantastic. But if I'm G2 now and I know that they're playing that retake setup and they're holding onto their nades, I'm not using any sound cues. I'm not throwing that Molotov that we saw Hunter throw. I'm going to walk on up and to where at the point where one flash, we can pop, go for oh. one of those classic contact strats and then run them over. Don't yeah. let them play retake. Get in their face. Take the nades out of their hands. And the vitality playbook. Yeah, and right now we've got the tactical timeout, so I'm sure that's similar to what Malik's telling them. 
They're just discussing which type of around they want to go for because we can clearly see there will be a buy. There's no problems there. Money is looking out of control. What do you take on Rob's uh, secondary orping duties? Well, nothing's working for them at the moment in terms of the server uh, That's fair, yeah. with, with their recent matches. So why not? Why not mix things up? Throw a different look in. You heard from Malik just there talking about individuals, you know, not feeling like they slot into the system properly or there could be uh, woes here, there and everywhere. Well, you got to get back in the groove somehow. Yeah, and in previous lineups as well, Rob's has experimented the orping. He was orping inside a train for a few months as well. He doesn't do it so much anymore but it's certainly capable with the weapon. It's the same flash as well. So 148, want to try and get us down. Frozen just enjoying the fireworks <laughs> as he does swing off towards the ramp itself. Another interesting round here. So much innovation being displayed here on Vertigo. Double orb setup still rings true for Mouse Sports and Hunter ready to challenge Frozen here. What a tantalizing battle that is. Two aim stars being tested on this A-bomb site. But look at this. As soon as the smoke clears, if there's no one on the other side, they should just walk on up. Oh, they're going to use smoke. So the tails are through. Let's see what nades come out of mouse. Yeah, so this is uh, this is going to be common ground for Kenny. You can see the plan. Jack's holding ramp. Kenny holding the top as well. And then eventually, we tend to cut to Kenny's POV, and he knocks three people off the site after that one way is gone. That smoke is designed to see the toes of anybody on ramp for the CTs. Very beneficial, so they'll wait that one out. Now Kenny can start his adventure. This procedural clear is his favorite. Getting to see it now first person, like a nature documentary. Oh, the smoke missed. He knows what he's looking for. A couple of shots. Look how open he was. Tucks into sandbags. 45 seconds on the clock. So... Still a five and five for now, but an A execution seems very likely from GT to close things out here. We have got Almanek watching the flanks, looking for their opportunity, hoping to bait out a bit more utility from the CT side. They still have three smokes, flashes, incendiaries. Mouse Sports know the importance of holding onto these grenades as GT gets so close, looking for the plant. Nexa will commit. Does Carrigan swing out? No. Nothing to stop it. Uh, on the fly, Nade does dunk him down to 45. Lovely stuff from Carrigan, but it's not a kill. And this retake now with all of those sets of utility, I imagine we get the full wall. Two we smokes. Have to. Yeah, it's the only way at this point. With the five and five retake, you have to do the wall. Especially with two orbs for the retake. Oh God, they need to get these smokes down. Somebody needs to lock them out. Otherwise it's, yeah, Nexa. Hunter finds two, puts their heads in a vice, a lovely angle found by Woxic, but it's all too little, too late. They have to preserve the orbs. Can somebody tell me why they didn't do the retake smokes? Do they not have that in I, their arsenal? They know. had enough. They had plenty of I nades. Would, I said it, I thought this is a bit of an obvious thing to say. Yeah. Well, it was, it's not even worth mentioning. Of course they're going to do it. But they just didn't do anything. They just waited until they, the smokes went down. They lost their jewels. And, and they had nothing orbs. to work with. Yeah. yeah, so not only there did they not go for the retake, they lost all their guns. They didn't use their utility wisely. I'm going to say they maybe don't know the retake smokes. Well, G2 certainly do. Um, they're one of the innovators of it. They're going to be displaying that plenty of times in their CT side. And I think this is a, probably the correct call now for Mouse Sports. You're getting absolutely wrecked out there. It'll be their second time out of this Vertigo pick of G2. And look at the money. We do have an orb available for Voxic Frozen. They'll be dropping pretty much everything here. $7,000 invested. Same story for Carrigan as well. They've had to pretty much put everything they've got on the table here. Chris J presumably will get a Deagle. And we'll have a look at Mobby Star Riders versus Copenhagen Flames. The Danes actually taking a, a lot of scouts recently, Alex. They're looking yeah. very good. Maybe on for another. I'm very excited for them as well. I, I, I really kind of uh, was excited for Refresh when he got his little ch his chance in the spotlight. And I think it's, it's yep. good that he's gone back down to a level now with a couple of lessons learned and a chance to turn heads and pop heads on the road to Rio. They've been doing well. Keep your eyes on that. If you fancy checking that out, just go ahead and add a B to the URL you're currently watching. Yeah, best of luck to him. Big fan. Turning heads for sure is Amanek. This is the spot I'm going to be using, Alex, from now on. Yeah, I, I, I knew you loved it. I, I love the generator. I hold here on default some team middle, but getting that angle there, they're not going to be able to pre-fire you. That's beautiful. Yeah, you know I would immediately see someone on tap S as well. <laughs> Just immediately. What? <laughs> So we're looking for Mouse Ward's success. So we want this game to be competitive. It normally is always such an excellent series, but quite lukewarm right now. But Carrigan, he'll pull a kill back. That's actually pretty influential, but it's all a ruse. You can see them getting set up towards B, going for that split of construction. But Voxic, he's in a pretty good spot here. Should be able to take a kill, no problem whatsoever, which he certainly will. Flashbang over towards the top of middle as well, trying to deny <gasps> access towards the elevators. A swing comes through, but it's too late, and Frozen takes care of it. That's a perfect crossfire, and this angle on elevator is usually enough. It's actually Rops connecting onto Kenny on B, before Nexa falls, and that's a whole lot better from Mouse Sports. That is what we need to see. Two orbs, two AKs, pretty damn perfect for them to save into the next, and they can soften the blow of this T-half still. Easily.
very easily. And opening kills are starting to go in their favor now here as well. Four to seven. It was pretty dire there. What were we, zero for six? And then yep. Woxie got one on an eco, so... Hasn't been great for Mouse Rocks in that did regard. did Kenny there, though. That's something to keep track of. See if that is a recurring theme. No doubt the kid can aim. Why not put the AWP in his hand? Yeah, turn it into a bit of uh, Quake, insta-give. Maybe with a little bit less movement. A few less bunny hops. Yeah, you don't have to aim for the head with insta-give, though. And that's just, like a nice luxury. Yeah, just in the chest. That's good enough. Or the toe. Round 12. I like seeing the Deagle in Chris J's hands still. He's got 2.5k, so he could get dropped a rifle from any of his teammates. He could buy himself some nades, perhaps, but... He's not doing Deagle, no nades. There could be a guy okay. on the Okay, rounds. okay. Uh, Phew. I, I thought he was on a utility guy. strike. I don't know why you're suggesting that. He's never got a rifle. He loves why? the Deagle. But why? <laughs> I don't know. I, I wish I could have a reason for you. Like, I get it, he's trying to save money, but this is getting out of hand now. Like, when you're losing, give him a rifle. Surely. <laughs> Either way, they know their game plan a lot better than I do. Maybe there's some method behind the madness. We are going to see next up, quickly up towards that A round. They've got full control. They haven't been contested there at all, so they're not going to be pushed back unless Vox once gets flashed through. Nexus certainly does. Wow. He's actually Hello. up towards the A side. They've got no idea. Communication, a little bit frantic at this point, but Frozen pulling some kills back here. He needs a second one here to make them feel comfortable, but a Molotov will do anything but. They are going to have to fall back here, and this is another retake scenario. They've got the smokes, and what kind of play are they going to make? Oh, Kenny's back on the sandbags, deciding better of it. He'll play the passive line. He's got a lot of punishing frags from this angle before. For now, though, they're closing the gaps. Look how fast Carrigan's got back onto the site. Any utility? Yeah, a whole lot of smokes. This is looking better for Mouse already. Closing the gap. They want to use perhaps Christian as a sacrificial lamb. He's defusing, and the spray, it does connect. Carrigan gets knocked off it. Another drops in. Rob's keeping him safe. Hunter's got to get him oh. off, and he does. One last body there. It's frozen, it. and he does have enough time. My God, a massacre all over the construction site. <laughs> HR, they've got a nightmare on their hands, but Mouseport's fine for. Well, it wasn't the prettiest retake, but it certainly was fun to watch. Mouseport's battling two for nail there inside this smoke. Absolute pandemonium there. No one was sure who's going to win the round, but it will be frozen with a full defuse there, spraying them down. Hunter finding kill after kill. They were trying multiple defuses here, but frozen finally gets the upper hand. And we go eight to four. They're starting to get back into this game now. You can see the money's starting to be whittled down. Not a full buy from G2. Look at the lack of grenades here. They're going for a fast play. Couple of flashes. They're going to try and steal around the way at this point and reset the money if possible. It's going to be a set piece. Just a bit of fun. See what's going on here. But Carrigan more than ready for it. Starting to wake up now. Frozen defends valiantly as he looks for his second kill. But that's going to enable a bomb plan now. Yeah, this is actually not looking too bad. Now Jax has got himself an AK. Woxic will be forced off the line. Double orbs again. Does make things difficult once that bomb goes down. Don't have to contest. Nexa feels like he's forced into these fights, though he's desperately trying to find some cover. Sat in the open, the flames his only guys. And that will be the end of him. All on to Jax, half health and three players hunting him down. Cops the flash, lives to tell the tale. Two more now, both orbs. It's down to Chris J, really, who's flanking through short. This is the end. Oh, not! He gets the first. Now the this. orbs are closing no in. Way. He's got no two. Way. And oh. Woxic. I don't think he has time. He he's does. got it. Yeah. It was close, but he's got it. Jax had a, a very, Jesus. very good attempt right there. Ooh, all right, well. Remember, that wasn't a force buy or anything, though. That was yeah. just a partial investment with Mac 10s and armor, no nades to get that bomb down. Costly. They brought it down to one versus one. If they win this next round, they're pretty much guaranteed the final one. Here's the other option that uh, G2 could look for. They are getting the site control and they're able to plant that bomb, but we saw how just chaotic that retake up before with the mouse spots holding on to a lot of those smokes. If they send someone late flanking middle or late flanking B to come on through while they're setting up those retakes, that's one way that they should be able to, to deal with this scenario that Mouseboards are throwing on in. But will we see a change of attack or at least a change of approach right now as we will get another tactical timeout coming on through. They've already used three timeouts in this first half, G2. And well, they were up seven to one. 7-0. There were 7-0. There were 7-0 to kick things off. Yeah, now so take five. It's uh, impressive for Mouse Sports to actually bounce back in this sort of manner. They had to win into a very crucial round, some high-octane moments as well, plenty of 1v1s being brought forward towards the end of this epic first half. We get to see a Chris J. Orp, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and a USP mixing up the sidearm. Wow, a primary weapon. <laughs> a primary Don't weapon. see that every day. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what he can do. Uh, jokes aside, Chris J. a fantastic Orpa. I'm, uh, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to make this work towards the B-bomb side. Rops has had his go. Now it's time to show you how Daddy does it. 
Guys, we don't call me that outside of the house, okay? Daddy, daddy. It's only in the compound <laughs> That's that fair enough. you'll refer to me as daddy. <laughs> <laughs> the compound. The compound. The compound. Dad. dad, Chad. <laughs> it's a weird world out there, and we're apparently in the center of it. We are going to have Hunter, though. Boosted up behind this smoke, looking for that first pick, trying to nail the dismount. I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10 for that one. Not quite silent, and Carrigan, he'll be taking the kill through the smoke there. Takes a lot of damage, down to 7 HP himself. Don't nade yourself, Carrigan. Make sure that, yeah, I think it's better. Just don't bother. Don't bother. Look oh, at this! Look at that! Hunter just finds the timing. He's such a weasel. He's 16 and 5. Nice work from Frozen. The same can be said for his frag there. And he wants more with a nade in their hand. Frozen, oh, he's doing it all. Triple kill, hunting for Nexa. He wants this round over and done with, but maybe Nexa has something to say. Woxic oh. will silence him. And that's, that's going to be sick. Second kill connects, Alex. I dare say he would have pulled off something quite special there. But Mouse Sports, fair play to them. That's going to be a boatload of rounds now. We go to number 15 here. They've actually got a chance of bringing this back to 8-7. Remember, it's 7-0 down on the CT side. They were looking so flat here. Uh, but G2, they can't break this at all. And we're going to that final round with pretty much maximum loss bonus to bomb down. And fantastic stuff from Frozen again. Look at the timing here. The aggression, the confidence. Also good. And Boxic is covering his teammate there. Gets the defuse there. No problem whatsoever. Double orb setup brought through. And it's AKs across the board for G2 now. It's amazing how perfect that smoke is, really. You wouldn't you wouldn't think something like that would exist in the game by chance. I wonder if Valve were uh, kind enough to give us that one. Yeah. It is so difficult, or at least it has been in previous iterations of the map for the CTs to defend here without yeah. dumping a truckload utility. And they made noise again, so will they get spammed off the smoke on this one. time? <laughs> Ooh, Carrigan, he'll find the opening once more, traded again, but this oh. time Frozen standing and delivering two big frags. Yeah, they stick the landing on that one. CTs with the upper hand, three versus two. Vox with the AWP or rotating people from elevators, looking to shut down the quick approach from short. He's got himself two flashes in the AWP in hand and looking to Get a quick kill I dare say he's got this one. Looks very good for him, and he'll nail it. Bomb goes down. Final round here. Next up has to go clutch. I don't see a world where Nex can get past these two orb lines. And, ooh, well, maybe Rox has given him one. A chance, perhaps, for the second. Flashes enable him to cross, but don't forget he doesn't have the bomb. And another fight. Oh, Chris J. Does manage to keep it stable, and Mouse Sports from 7-0.
The amount of innovations displayed there from G2. They had some great execution, some nice new grenades, but it wasn't quite enough. Eight, seven and a half. It's split it right down the middle once again. And Mouse was now on the T side. He've got himself a Molotov, two smokes, and a flashbang. Robs with the Superman setup here with the P250 in armor. And they look like they're running towards the B side of the map. A time will tell where they're off to. Towards there we go once again. As expected, we have got... A couple of smokes. You'd expect a wall of smokes here on the A side of the map. Mollus over the boost boxes and see if they can get that plant down. But we're going to see if there's any aggression here from the CT side. Hunter at the boost box, getting a bit of vertigo himself up there. Yeah, uh, nice. I, I never nice. love that position. I, I am never really a huge fan, but it, there is someone spotting in the back lines here to make sure they can't get to sandbag. That's when he gets in trouble. super scientifically, though. Look at Rush. Could you mind? He's just hiding his barrel behind the girder as well. Often sticking out. Amanek sticking out in the feed only for the first. Hunter exposed from the short push and now still standing his ground. Rops will catch him with the Superman setup, but three versus two. Chris J to plan. Well, Bomb will be going down here. They've still got a smoke and that P250 on Robs of 100 HP here. So he has to be combative. He knows it as well. Chris J does deploy the smoke. Trying to get out of this scenario now. Close range is where he should shine, but he can't find a single kill. Can you Rob's smell it? Oh, apparently. It could be a three versus one for Robs here. It's looking pretty good. No kits available. You can hear them dropping onto the site. And they push as one lovely work from G2. This, you punish the first peak, right? As soon as he gets the jiggle and has gotten away, he's won the round. They knew they had to win that duel the second he'd revealed himself. Great now stuff. G2, Team Ace. Survive. Yeah, indeed. So we were talking about the opening jewels and how low it is for Mouse Sports within that first half. Carrigan was actually a big part of opening kills for them. He went 4-0 and oh in terms of uh, opening jewels, and that was big over towards A, right? He was one of the assertive forces stopping them before Fighting they were able ramp, to get full right? control. Of his seven kills that he managed to get in the first half, having four of them as opening frags, if they were all rounds that were converted to, to rounds in the back pocket, that's good stuff, right? Because we know Carrigan on social media hasn't been too happy with his performance thus far. He is... Rops dropping down a smoke into the B main. Did it miss? Hello. It's not there. It must have missed. Damn, okay. So that's a lot of freedom given to these deagles. Might catch Rops off guard. We'll check in with that if it becomes relevant. Rush has got all the eyes we need. And a boost. Unannounced boost. Does enable him, if they're holding a tight line, to really get up close. Which they are, so she can mantle over that, should he desire. For now, he'll play passive. It's Carol going with that opening kill with the P250, but that's all a ruse. You can see them set up towards B, ready to go to a contact play, and there's only one player towards that side of the map. Off. Next up is going to be pushing middle. There with Jax, they've got an open bomb site. They can't believe their luck here. Bomb going down for sure. It's on the back of Robs for now, and he's got an open runway. The Carrigan, oh, why is he called the knife out? That quick oh. switch just killed him. Like, we, we talk about it being a bad habit. That one may just be coming back to haunt him. Ooh, that could do. That was a prime opportunity just to get one kill. And now the pressure is on. The Desert Eagles still make this work, but the pre fires are coming through. It looks like G2 have done enough here. One knife switch has potentially cost them the rounds here. I'm not saying they definitely would have won it if he gets that kill, but probably got a one more kill out of it, and it's going to be a pretty clean sweep towards the end. So fair enough, getting the bomb planted there, but they certainly wanted a bit more. I want to quickly correct myself. It was Nexa throwing the smoke, not Rops. Rops was on the T side. It was just Rops is the one who caught my eye last time we saw them play this map because yeah. he had a smoke for that position from every single spawn, right? When he was spawning on the CT side, he always seemed to have a smoke from wherever he was to get it down as quick as possible. So next, they're not sticking the landing right there, but it didn't matter too much. But that plant, it does. Mouse Sports can get a big buy on the cards right here. And well, there it is. He fluffed his lines. Where did it end up then? Oh, it went over the top. Thank you for the replay, Capitan. Beautiful stuff there. And All the right. quick switch. Ooh, ooh. You hate to see it. It's no fun for anyone. 5v5 then. We're back off into the third round of our second half. Full weapons, I say that with the SMG caveat of two preserved rifles, or excuse me, SMGs from round two. So, lots of B action coming in here. What's Nexus plan with that? Just underhand the smoke on contact? A lot of noise. They make way too much noise. I don't know why they'd continue with this one minute 20 remaining, but each to their own, they are going to be walking in and presumably getting this first kill. Miss spray from Nexus out, but it will be converted by the HE at a match and doesn't Ooh. quite connect with Carrigan. They saw all the nades as well get rallied on through towards that sandbag position. So probably reported that there's a few members over towards that side of the map right here. They're investigating for any pushes. You can see just how worried they are about the A push, the mid push. 
Oh. This is the way that I thought the map was going to have to play out eventually anyway. We know with the two layers how uh, you can hear a lot of the steps, obviously, above and below. But this is going to be an epic duel here in middle. It's the same as last round from G2. They're pushed, and Rops is getting the better of them this time round. Well handled. Will they expect this? Look at the flank. Chris oh, he's trying to survive. He does manage to get back down the ladder. Bit of an awkward one in middle. Jack's trying to deal with two different positions at the same time. He's doing a great job, though. The fact he's still alive and upgraded to the M4 as well. He hasn't panicked too much, but still a five versus three in the B bomb side. I assume it's open once again, and it should be mouse boards here. We'll have a comfortable close out of this round. We've got three smokes, Molotovs available. And in a five on three, it should be nigh on impossible to even get close to this bomb. Then ah. hot potato. Past the parcel, eventually. Bomb does go down. It looks to me like Mao's have redone their theory on this map, or at least they've had a big conversation about how they want to approach it. Because there are certain mid-rounds here where they are staying very organized, whereas in the past, I think they might bloodlust and just run on in and go down. You know, we talk about this team in smoke gimmicks. Well, on the T side so far, it hasn't been about that type of play. We're only, of course, a couple of rounds in. But just there, it was a clear approach, and they were happy once they had the information to dawdle around, go somewhere else, the find another presence, fight, drop the, on back. The, the stopping the CTs pushing middle for info on the B contact was really nice. Yeah. Coming back to B after the frags in middle. So we know that G2 are a very assertive team on their CT side. You know, you think about maps like Inferno or Dust2, they're always pushing for information, either through those long doors or they're retaking top mid and the brackets position. Well, here middle seems to be quite key for them. And I guess if they clear out that ladder room and top mid, and it is a bomb site hit on B or A, they've taken the flank out of the equation. So that could be one of the positives to go for that type of uh, a defense or an assertive uh, mid-round play for info. And this is the one with Chris J. He's going to think to himself, mate, <laughs> what do I even do here? He got away with it, though. Chris J. Getting that key bit of information there to get Mouse Sports yet another round on the board. It's our first of the second half. Going to be 2-1. And it does mean G2 have plenty of cash going forward after saving a couple of weapons here. We've got three, make it four M4A4s and the Hunter with the UMP here. So a tactical timeout, the final one for G2 here. On their map pick suggests they're not having the best possible time. But remember, uh, in this tournament, especially with the online play, Malak is able to communicate the entire time. It's not just in these timeouts itself. Just in case you guys are worried. Yeah. It's no all fear. under control. No fear. Timeout does just enable you to have an extended conversation. And so now it's time to see what they've put their thinking caps on about. Still have that SMG on Hunter. Not sure how he, he's going to make that UMP utilized effectively. Taking it towards the A site for now. So then. Mouse Sports looking to find consecutive rounds here if possible. Rob's. Probing towards middle and Jack's boosted. Obviously, a lot of players boosted. Middle wasn't really utilized ever before in previous iterations of Vertigo, especially the last couple of them. Now it's a super viable and important part of the map. Prime real estate. And we'll see Frozen and Mouse Force General to slow a ride down. Flashbang goes on the corner here for Rops. Just going to be making sure no one's super close range, but he does need to be aware of the boosted position. Four members of Mao's start to congregate towards the ramp clearing as they go. Very passive hold from where I'm standing. I see just Hunter tucked in with a UMP. G2 are going to have to start pushing for information. And look at this. Two descending the B stairs. Rops his responsibility. But they start their A hit. He's turned around. He's got the lineup. Hunter. Planning to nade that plant as soon as the sound cue comes in. Kenny unloads a clip at the different plant. That Molotov may not work out. It's not going to quite get caught in a safe plant. Now they push into the crosshair and Rops was ready. One for one. Is that going to be enough though? There's now only one flashbang remaining on the mouse squad side. We've got a smoke here for G2 as well. They start their retake here. Voxic holding the off angle here. Dangling off the edge of the building, hoping he won't be checked and and all this chaos, it might be overlooked. Time will tell, but it is quite a common position. Jack's edging his way forward, and he does check it, and it's a double kill for G2 here. They're going to have a 4 on 2 scenario. Remember, no grenades from Mouse Sports need to fight to for now. It's working out, and Frozen, he might have actually done enough here. The defuse has to come in. They've only got kill on Jack. Oh, oh he's floundering. More. They've actually lost the round. It's all falling apart here. There will be no defuse, and Mouse Sports will find their second of this half. They couldn't find the bomb. I think no. that was one of the problems right was there it as well. Or something? It looked a little bit strange. That was unusual. So they found it on the left-hand side of the site there, not actually on the site itself, because it was molotov -ed. 
That's right. Yeah, the corner plant. Yeah. Maybe that was enough just to buy them the extra seconds. Frozen, he gets the shots. Great spray control into the first two. We'll get to see Rox's first frag on that flank. Amanate did trade and proceed to actually claw his way back up the ramp. But let's see how this ended. Looks like it's all G2 frags, but you can see Mouseports, they'll post the ninth on that and send the CTs into just P2Ks, a couple of nades, and that saved M4. Certainly doesn't look like enough to win a round, but I'm always happy to be proved otherwise. More and more recently, we seem to see these rounds paying on off because people are so gap. focused. They're so focused on the gun rounds that when these pistols come out, you get a little bit rattled, maybe lose one or two easy kills, and you quickly panic and you head over to the other side. And well, guess what? That's where the rest of the CTs could be waiting for you. So this was a very important round for Mouse Spots here. They can tie things up at 10-10 if they're able to put this one on the board. Things have been looking much better for them ever since that 7-0 uh, was posted, isn't it? Yeah, 7-0, now 10-9. Nine to three if you skip the first seven rounds. It's been quite the performance from Mouse. Happy to see that them Vertigo has definitely evolved. And Molotoving off the top position. Full mid control gained. A flash towards the CT spawn. And Amanex off angle could have paid off. Tags Chris down low and can't be finished off by Nexa. Oh, well played. Chris keeps himself safe and takes two in the process. Yeah, one of the few players using the MP7 these days. He always makes it look good. Money farmed and presumably round one. Hunter and Jackstone, oh. still the M4. And there's a huge gap in that smoke. Actually, gives him a bit of a runway here. Oh. Jax will find one. Back to a two on two. And there is a kid available as well. So bear that in mind. They are going to go for this. Hunter looking for the one dig. And it's a great position from Frozen. And he'll get a lovely shot to follow it up. Molotov should shut this round down. We're going to tie things up. It goes 10 to 10. G2 starting to drop off the pace now. And they will have money for a buy. But Chris J managing to get a job done with that MP7. I think. Uh Mousesports might know what's on the line here. You know, their tournament life potentially on the line, knowing just those early losses that they've had against teams they should be beating every day of the week. Well, now they have to do it the hard way. Now they have to beat the G2s of the world just to keep their head above water. So we are seeing some good stuff coming on through here. Final kill from Wonksik. That's a cool little play. So dropping the incendiary, then swinging while it's in the air as well. Lovely stuff. So. As we mentioned, there is a buy for G2, but as you can see, compromises need to be made. They certainly don't have the double orb set up as of yet. Jax towards the middle, just pixels spotting. We'll drop the smoke as soon as he feels under threat. Regardless, chucks it at the choke on the Rops is ahead of that. This actually helps him out because he assumes it's clear now and they've already snuck past. This could be a nightmare. All down to the timing, Good. really. Jax boosted though. If Kenny gets back, oh, they're boosting themselves. This is going to be a Jax advantage, you'd assume. Oh, he gets it, Rops. Tags him down to 40. Carrigan could try and get the trade. He has the info and a dunk to ensure the 4v4 is maintained. Amonex in the RPK spot. A lot of damage to be inflicted here. And yeah, Chris J is caught out. This should be the trade from Wopsick. And he does level it. 3v3. Carrigan's aggressing into the Kenny scope. Burning his toes significantly, but still keeping the man advantage. Mouse Sports have two players remaining and a couple of Molotovs as well, but they level the playing field. It's oh. going to be Nexa taken out here. Lovely oh. incendiary. They're burning to a crisp here. It's so overwhelming and frozen. Now, luckily, have a smoke to buy himself a few seconds. Still have the Molotov available as well. Buy one of Molotov off the right hand side. Gets a first kill, but traded out by Hunter. It's going to be G2 posting their first after conceding three. That Molotov from Hunter was perfect, was nice, wasn't, wasn't it? it? That nade Molotov combo is great. It's very stifling on that bomb site. You, and you just, just force into a real awkward wide swing. Yeah, we know how open this bomb site is now. You can clearly see there isn't as much cover as there was before. A Jenny being removed right there, and obviously. Seems like the site has been widened significantly. I think the the, uh, the removal of quad does make it feel a lot more T-sided, like T-favored. You don't no longer have that deep corner you have to commit to just to come to, to start planting. Yeah, and the mouth is obviously a, a bit Shadow, wider as interesting. well. Interesting. So Shadow advantage on boost box. Remember that one for the future. Not bad. Not a bad little lesson right there. Remember that one for uh, all of your matchmaking games. I'm oh. sure you won't be getting too many vertigo ones. But... Stabbing each other and spawn. Kenny gets uh, a right stab in the back, I assume. I believe that was actually oh, HE. Yeah, the nade, the, through the, nade through the mid window. Ah, well, there you go. That's not bad. There's a lot of damage. Yeah, they do that one. On the corner. Similar one is what they used to do when there was the uh, sand, sandbag position, but it's off that girder. Sure. Triple boost. That's really cool. Wow. It is quite a commitment here on the A side of the map. You wouldn't necessarily expect it on a gun round, so I like the play. Do they go for multiple frags as well? Is it just uh, take a frag, drop off, or do you wait for a couple? 
I'll be interested to see what Hunt will go for. He's got the Simon Stem 4 as well. Bear that in mind. It'll be difficult to work out exactly where he is. But uh, this can be pre fired. A lot of T teams will walk up if they're coming Ooh. here late. I don't know if this is going to work out. Oh, he gets put on the box. Chris J sits Hunter down for a conversation, and it's an awkward one. Hunter forced to watch now. Five versus four. Mousebot's looking for the equalizing 11th. They've got so many smokes still. They're starting to bombard the site. Kenny, he's staying around. He's actually got a bit of a gap here. Oh, he can really exploit that. Does he want to stick around? Ooh. It looks like he's trying to get out of dodge instead. Oh, they're running away. They're going to hear this. Isn't the that audible? Yeah, it's very so loud. audible. Oh, they're scrambling. Everyone's scrambling right now. It's wide open. Carrigan's made the right call. It's a wide open site. He's just walking in first. He's telling them he's with such conviction. Follow me, lads. It's going to be clear. Through mid, Rops catches the rotate. There's a second chance as well. Jax, oh, catching him on the scroll wheel, but still, he goes down. Kenny on the retake oh. hits some brilliant shots. Another in the open on the jiggle. He hits through the box. And now all on to Amanek, softened up by Kenny. This could be the one versus two. Looking good. Sees his backpack. Woxic's being so cheeky. He's running out of bullets. Six, and it's not enough. <laughs> How Voxy gets away with that, I'll never know. 31 HP, just one bullet would have done it, but still, it will be Mousewoods coming out on top. Tuck and Tail running back towards the B bomb side. What an excellent call there. You can see how quickly, with the new connector position, you can get up those steps in an open site. It's just beautiful to watch. And G2, they are going to be wrecked for their finances now. $2,000 per player, kind of have to be the eco. And Mouse Sports, a chance to actually take their opponent's pick here. And there was 7 0 down, Chad. Yeah, and this is the Mouse Sports that uh, we've been missing over the last couple of days, haven't yep. we? We're talking about they were lacking in opening kills. Well, now they're winning 12 to 10. They were lacking in terms of multi frags. Well, they've caught right up. They've got 14 to their name. There's 18 on that G2 side of things. But the round's about to fall in the favor of Mouse Sports, assuming nothing goes awry right here. I like the idea. Something we'd have come up with for hugging that half wall with just P250s, CZ as well. I think Rob's is far too smart for this. Will Kenny's jiggle bait him in? Let's find out. Okay, that's the bait. Rob's the fishy, not gonna fall for it. Oh, you're getting inquisitive. It's interested. In the, oh, okay, now that's a little dodgy. Here they come. A wave of CTs. And they will get themselves an AK, but that's pretty much all. They'll rotate back through middle. And uh, I think that's Mouseport's cue to start charging into the A site. They have taken a lot of space already. Harrigan holding the line before the smokes do bloom. Now they're up. He can plant. Perfect. Yeah, should be no danger of losing this round, that's for sure. But maybe they can steal away a couple of AK-47s. They've already managed to find one. That was from Rops towards the middle with the mid-stack coming in. Carrigan gets himself close towards the CP CD sniper Ooh. deck here. Flashbang to go in. Maybe he'll swing. I think he will. Ooh. Thought they'd have a bit more aggression there. It felt like yeah. they were setting something up. Maybe they'd had a conversation about that one. Carrigan doesn't want to give the AK-47 away, and that's actually the smarter play in oh, this kind is. of a round. Definitely, but it's not the most fun. Hey, Green, uh, you play, did you play any Minecraft last night? Uh, no, I didn't. We got back very late, didn't we? So I um, I sadly didn't. I really wanted to get some more netherite gear, to be honest. Yeah. Did you just go straight to bed like a good boy? This yeah, is where the name um, comes in. You ready? Hey, Cheap. <laughs> if only. If only. We well, get all day tomorrow, I suppose, to play Minecraft, so... Yeah, it should be fun. Oh, I'm uh, off. really excited to get back into the nether, see what's going on, kill some ghasts and all that kind of stuff. We're going to do another ESEA grind? Uh, yes, most definitely, of sweet, course. Sweet, 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 sweet. I'm really starting to enjoy the uh, defining of my roles a little bit in our fragging group. I gave you the MSL job on Nuke. What did you I think like about the that MSL one? job. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have much impact, but... I guess, you know, there's always next time. You know, they get the kills that come to you, exactly. Alex. You know, that's, that's the they way the counter frag dives, goes on. Yeah. They didn't do any vent dives. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. You did get some frags outside when you rotate a top ladder with the AWP, though. Yeah, so. that sounds fine. Speaking of AWPs, Kenny's got one out now, and that might be the change that G2 are looking for here. Potentially have to be a little bit more assertive across the map to find some opening picks, because Mouse Sports seem like they're playing the mid-rounds very well. It's been multiple times that they've gone to a site, it looks like they're going to hit it, and then they see that there's too many members there, there's too many grenades that gets all reported in, and well, they hightail it. They're able to rotate back around and make G2 look a little bit silly with their over-rotation. So, yeah. Oh, look at this buy from Chris J as well. He could have afforded uh, absolutely everything. They go for a quick run, boost is perfect. Hello. Like that see is those ones. so satisfying to watch. Well, Rops. I, I was going to mention they've got no helmets, and Chris J's Mac 10 can do all the work here. It might have been better to just throw him around the corner, but still, they've got an opening four and four. They can't be too mad about it. They actually missed that run boost a couple of days ago. It was Chris J that was flung to his death. 
But uh, now head back towards the A side here. Frozen already progressing towards short. There are very few teams you get to see doing the run boost in an official game. I'm glad Mouse Sports are one of them. Nixon wants to take a little initiative here. Catch Woxic oh. on the off angle and he does. He just trims the tips of his hair. Four versus three now. They continue their advance. Frozen locked out by the nade. This fights everything. And Nexa, he's on for three. Will be silenced by Jax, who needs to get that upgrade weapon. It is only on to Frozen now. He hasn't got much of a shout in this one, despite being caught with a nade. His smooth move enables him to have another bite of the cherry. There's a chance. But can he make sure it's not a long one? Oh, wow. Frozen does manage to pull one back, but it will be G2 posting. Their first round in quite a while. It's going to be 12 to 12, though. Mouse Sports actually broken financially in some cases, but they do manage to get AKs one more time. Here's the run boost. You can see how beautifully done this was. No even jump required. Straight into it, and a flashbang goes over the top as well. He's actually blind as well. So Carrigan throws the flashbang as they're doing the run boost. There. A lot of pressure, chat to nail the front the jump on the first go. Yeah, and that's why we don't see it too much within the pro circuit, because that margin for error, you fall. You're just yeah. a, uh, you're giving away an entry kill at that point. You're not even getting yourself in a chance to find a frag. So curious there, but G2 they were able to play in transition as Mouse Sports were setting on up and make them pay. It looks like now Mouse have got better of the A bomb. So we'll be heading over to back towards B. They have enough nades to make this work, and Christian he's just walking on up straight on in. Yeah, he's helping himself. Next to though, an ideal position to potentially shut this one down, but the M4, it doesn't do a load of damage until now. He might even get two out of this one. He has done more than enough for his team at that point. It looked like he was absolutely done for there. Carrigan looking for multiple kills, only finding one though. Frozen, another three on one. And presumably will be taken down momentarily. There it is. Kenny S finds him the lead once again. We said the money was weak going into round number 25. It certainly is here now. $2,500 per player. And we're getting to the very exciting point of the map. So they will have to take an eco, allowing G2 to go to 14 to 12. On the CT side, it is considered to be a T-sided map, but it's not really clear right now. We're still seeing this map develop every week. We had Frozen's POV then, right? And we just got Kenny's to close that out. You can see when Frozen rounded that corner, he saw absolutely nothing. Kenny saw uh, Frozen what felt like years. So that's the left eye, right eye peak kind of scenario going on down, as it will just be these pistols. And there it is. The AWP strikes true, and Carrigan will fall here. So, nice opening from Kenny. Oh, he's got the lineup. We talked about this. He knows what he's got to do for that crouch pre-aim. Two very, very quick kills. Kenny, comfortable. He's one of the few that really does make that AWP look natural on Vertigo. Yeah, he really does. Device, another one. This is a risk. Look at Nexa. He's playing the quad. It's a slither of metal. And now deciding to reveal his position. It's worked wonders. Another triple kill for Nexa. Anchor on the site, just locking him out. But that was the eco. Now the real test coming. G2, two rounds away from converting their map pick. Well, money's back on track for Mouse Sports. And uh, checking out the B stream as well, you can see Mobistar Riders getting manhandled by the Copenhagen Flames. They managed to take some huge scalps on their journey here on the road to Rio. And this could be another one of those stories. Mobistar Riders also been impressive. So good job, the Copenhagen Flames. Look like that round and map will be theirs. Molotov towards the corner of the box. The black smudge and the fourth exactly. white smudge. Fourth splatter. Fourth splatter, that was the correct term. You see with what they're doing here though, they're trying to isolate any CTs who are in front of that Molotov. The flash comes through, they both clear it, and now that they know there's no early information, but with Jax boosted on that box, he could very quickly take that back. We have Rops here with the smoke, which is likely going to go over to the construction position, and that's where, well, Nexus standing and waiting. That one lands beautifully there. Couldn't ask for anything more. Jax is on his own right now. Oh, and he had the headshot. You could see the cool shades of cool guy Carrigan. Manages to pick up that first frag, boosting up as well. This could catch Kenny S off, and it does. Mouse Sports, they're doing all the moves to find two opening frags here on middle. What's their final play, though? Still possible for Nexa to get a couple here and peel off. He'll get the first, looking for that second now. He gets Carrigan, they're right back into the round, but it's a huge kill for the in-game leader to find, and Voxic, he's looking off the choke points yet. Hunter, he's actually going to save already. The barrel got spotted there, so... 
Well, he knows something's up. He's definitely heard the drop of the weapon. But they don't know that the round is guaranteed. The save is already coming through, and that's important to get the AWP back over into the hands of Kenny. The money, or the loss bonus, sorry, 4G2 will only be 1,400. Should still be able to get a buy going if they hold on to these weapons. Not too many dramas. Guys, do you find out, like, I'm finding now during this whole quarantine situation that when I wake up every day and I, I check my phone to see all the messages from all the people who love me, there's no messages because you guys are with me all the yeah, time. Yeah, there's no emails or messages normally. Yeah, uh, it's a, a, few, a few companies get in contact. I've had lots of requests to do interviews, um, but... I haven't even got that chat. No one even cares about me, so... I care about you, Henry. Thank you so much. But yeah. yeah, no one else really cares about us. I'm just turning my phone off during the day now. I've decided. <laughs> I've de I, I just thought I'll just turn it off and then when I turn it on in like eight hours time from now, we'll see how many messages I have. Yeah, that's I have. what my grandma does. She treats it like a phone box. She like yeah. checks in with it, yeah. turns it on. I know I'm addicted to the thing, so the longer I can have it out of my hands, probably the better. But uh, Ooh, okay, so they're doing this a similar strategy to that of mouse sports here, transitioning to a double op. I wonder if one of them solo B. I saw Amanek heading towards that oh. direction. It does seem he's playing B for now. Kenny aggressive in middle. Yeah, I like the aggressive ult towards middle. It can be very powerful, but this is the scariest battle you have to take. Ch challenging towards this generator. That's got Jacks there as well, so we're establishing some solid control. The AK 47's available. Rob's not interested in the battle, though. That's really looking for some A control. Going to join his teammates eventually, but Jax is pushing towards spawn. Happy to challenge anyone that could be holding this flank. Rops was, but not anymore. I love how active this is. We haven't seen what G2 are doing out of any of the teams so far on Vertigo, but it will be the A hit. Can they contain it? Can they slow this down for that flank of Jax to come through? Looking good with the first from Kenny and Carrigan. Very exposed damage from Hunter as he ties the tuck tail. Chris J will find something. This is the flank from Jax. A little too late, perhaps. Oh. Chris J will be getting that bomb down. Never mind, a wall bang. Amanek had the lineup. Yeah, that was from the CT sniper deck as well. That's huge. Oh. You bring it down to a four versus two. Robson and Frozen with 40 seconds here. Going for the plant. Another wall bang attempt will be attempted, but it doesn't land. A chance now. Molotov available for Frozen. Might want to get that in towards the elevators momentarily, but it's trying to wait for the last possible moment to get it down here. That's not bad. And now Robs. He gets his kill. They're back in the round, but the timing is terrible. That's unfortunate. And Frozen. He'll be taken out as well. Math point G2. Damn, Jax. That's 15 now. One more. So not only are they doing aggressive plays on the CT side, we've seen them push towards B, we've seen them push towards middle now, taking back information on anti-ecos. They even had the retake smokes. So we just saw those two smokes posted up there towards the top of the ramp. The thing is, I thought flanking would be so much more powerful, but obviously that bridge being the only choke point that the CTs are able to come on through to deal with that A site, it's so difficult, right? It's not an easy place to clear whatsoever. So the flank, you have to be really quiet, like we saw from Jax, he didn't make any noise, he went very late, but it was a key kill. Well, here we go then, could be the final round here. Kenny is with the same peak towards the A ramp. Spots a couple of players, but doesn't connect the shot. Carrigan just with a tech nine here, opting for the utility over the firepower. See whether Robs can dissect the middle position. Once again, beating those smokes that the CG's deployed. Jax, he's positioned himself in quite the off angle, just standing on top of the, uh, what do we call them? Pallets? Uh, closest? That's probably... Plasterboard? Yeah. Plasterboard. Wow, great patience from Amanek. Made sure he had the clear shot and will connect, and so will Jax. Perfect. You talk about having the AK and enabling players to play like that, Henry. Yeah, it's beautiful. It means you can take more combative positions, knowing the one-taps could come through eventually. And it looks like G2 have done enough here. 15 to 13, five on two. Amanet looks confident towards the B side of the map. Decent smokes here from Mouse Sports, but Jax looking to close things out. Here comes Carrigan, he's got the one, but that's the bomb loose. There's plenty of time for Chris J to work, but it's not enough space. Hunter takes it from...